So today's topic is on system setup and the package structure and state. So I'm mostly gonna work off of the previous cohorts notes, which I think were written by Ryan Metcalf, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so chapter three is relatively short and it's about the DevTools package, checking which version of R and R Studio you are using, and also use this package and the use R, difference between use R and develop bars. So first of all, <clears throat> we run hey, this sorry, Howard, R. Just a quick question, Hal, just before you yeah. go on. Um, did, what was your interpretation of when he said use R? Is that, is it, as a naive person, is that like a, de defining a person, like a type of person? Like a use R is like a, yeah, okay, right. So like we're trying to transition I, right now from a use R's to um, a develop R's sort of setup. Is that yeah, correct? that's a good question. I'm still a use R, that's me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I just read it as, are you a user of R or a developer of R? <laughs> uh, that's yeah. good. I was wondering if that was like different settings on R Studio or whether it was just like what hat you're wearing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like that's that. what I thought too, Neil. I was like, I wasn't sure what it meant, but that's great. Yeah, yeah awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think also like if you are using mostly data analysis, uh -huh. so, you know, you work your workflow as some things that have a top and a hand. And it's mostly like your workflow. And it's different that when you, even, even sometime at the top of my workflow, okay, I'm writing a function like a real programmer on the top of it to, because I do not want to repeat myself. But it's not, I will not add the function uh, like uh, in the package to call it, just call it with source, source, and that's it. Uh, I don't know if it's like, um, it's another like way of doing, uh, of using R that a software developer, I would say. So maybe mm -hmm. this is I also agree. a difference. <clears throat> yep. Uh, please feel free, feel free to interrupt me during this. Uh, I would prefer this to be a two-way conversation than a one-way conversation. So, um, yeah. So as I said, they run R dot version, which I've done here. And so I'm on a Mac, a 2021 Mac. So my OS would be Darwin, which is like a name for a Unix operating system. And also I, I thought what was interesting was that it showed you these like major minor components. So the major is four and the minor is 2.1. So this is the version of your R on your operating system. And so um, they also point out that this component is important, the version.string, and it just concatenates um, these components into one string. So our version 4.2.1 and then the date. Um, so I'll move on if there's no other questions. And so you can also run this session info function. Um, I haven't really looked into this that much, um, but I think just shows you like what packages are loaded in your namespace and a bunch of other information here. Yeah, it also show like the math library you are using. You have BLAST and you have sometimes open BLAST. Like matrix products default like blast lapac, they use like when you use like some some computation stuff that ask you like to maybe uh -huh. load other other one and can generate uh, different results. If you oh you mean uh, matrix library? Yeah. Uh, library usually in 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 C uh, that you are having that are using to do all the maths and the computational behind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, using other one, like you use the default one, but sometimes people use open blast and there's another one I, I don't remember. So, listen. I mean, if you, if you go like to open research uh, stuff and mm -hmm. 
to, to all rotation input. Okay, yeah, so I see. So, I, so I, don't, I do not know if it's good or not, but. Yeah, I've actually never heard of these things before. It's good to know that there's another option. Yeah, th th there are plenty of options, you know, developers, producers, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So instead of blast, you can have open blast? Yes, that's it, for example. Yeah. And then moving on, um, we load these packages, DevTools, R Oxygen 2, TestDat, and NetR. Um, I'll just skip this section here, move on. <clears throat> so this section talks about DevTools. And basically, DevTools is a wrapper that provides the ability to set user-friendly defaults introduce helpful interactive behavior, and then combine functionality from multiple sub packages. So here's another discussion on use Rs and develop Rs. Going back to our previous discussion. Um, and so use Rs attach dev tools and develop Rs should not depend on dev tools. So when I first read this paragraph, I wasn't really sure what they meant. And, but this example really illuminates what this this means. So I think, um, I think if you are a use R, then you would library dev tools and load all. But then if you are if you are a developer and you are developing R packages, and you want to use the load all packet uh, function inside your R package, then you want to put uh, the name of your package and then these double columns, and then your function name. So this is for use R, and this is for develop R's. Then uh, the next section is library dev tools. So you can attach dev tools with this function. Um, but then, you don't want to do this every time you load up your R session because it's repetitive and we want to avoid repetition. So what they say is you want to take advantage of this .r profile file. Um, so let me show you what that looks like on my R studio. So I ran use this dot dot uh column column use dev tools and then this function opened up this r profile file which is located in my home directory on a mac os that's right here and then oh just question did you because i i yeah. had already had stuff in my dot r profile and when i did this tool it deleted it and then we made a new one which was kind of annoying um but i couldn't find any evidence of that set anywhere so I don't know, it was a bit strange. Like I just assumed you would find it and open it, but it just found it, deleted it, and it opened a new one. And it was like, oh, yeah. no. Um, so that was a bit of a bummer. So but... two thoughts that come to mind is, I actually recently got this computer. So I think that's wow. why I have nothing about the R profile. And also mm -hmm. when I watched the previous cohorts recording, the speaker, Ryan Metcalf, he had mentioned that um, dot, so anything that starts with dot is a hidden file. So maybe if you're on like a Windows, then the Windows hides your dot R profile. I'm not sure which OS you are using though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so. it's definitely I, I basically unhide all my files because I find the hidden thing annoying. But yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Mm. Okay. But but um if you just use this function, it will open up your R profile for wherever it is. And it basically copies this to your clipboard and you can just paste it in your R profile, save it, and then restart your R session um, for this change to take effect. So basically, now that you have this inside your R profile, um, uh, every time you open up your R session, I believe you're gonna load DevTools. And yeah, so what 
it's I've even I think even if you do not have desktop, it will inter install it. I think require if yeah desktop is not so it's not even like loading it, it's probably will install it and all the dependency. I see. But uh yeah. So the <laughs> right, so, so you're saying that require will check if it's installed and sort and then load it, but library will give you an error if it's not installed first. I have to read the documentation, I, but uh, probably, I think if it's not installed, it will try to install it from CRAN. I, I do not know the correct, uh, the correct behavior of require. Um, yeah, I mean, I have the documentation up, but- uh, You cannot read it. <laughs> it's, it's very long. <laughs> it's very complex. Let me... Well, what I get out of this is that require it returns a uh, true and false indicating that the required package is available um, example <laughs> let's go straight to example, example yeah. <laughs> yeah so i just pasted it in the yeah. chat it says require gives a warning rather than an error so i don't think it okay. will install it but so we will not try to install it it just won't mess things up. Okay. In terms of you, you won't have a stop from an error. You'll just have a warning. Let's see. Yeah. Thanks for playing that. Okay. So here, they're saying that you can use the use this package to add these options to your .r profile. So you can specify your name, um, all these description thingies for your package. Um, but I didn't really do this because yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really need to. Uh, and here for history purposes, I think what this means is that our studio is trying to promote, um, their new package pack. P A K instead of the yeah what is it the DevTools installed GitHub they they want users to use this pack package to install from GitHub. It's very good. Yeah, you like it. Yep. <laughs> In what, what, what way is it better? In what way is it better? Why is it is it good or why is it uh, is it to the change? Sorry. It, what so, way do you like it better than the previous? Oh, I, I like it because like uh, it also can uh, print the dependency outside of R before you install. Not not necessarily the package install function, which uh, okay may, maybe give you like a shinier, um, like uh, you know, like this a, a bit better like um, interface. Better interface. Yeah, but not better results. I don't know how to call it, but uh, you have. Much. Yeah, this stuff. I don't know what you call it. Uh, if you if you try one with it and one without, you will see. But uh, mostly, uh, there's some functions that look at dependency. This one, and so uh, yeah. like uh, I also I also think uh, it's produced the one you need on your system. I don't remember which one it is. So when you are Linux users, as you will see in the chapter next, uh, we have to uh, ask something to build the binary, the binary is not built, so we have to build it. And if we do not build the dependency before, it doesn't work. So with this package, it makes our life a bit easier. This is why I like it. <laughs> so this function helps you look up dependencies, but does it also help you install these dependencies? No. <laughs> So you just have to look them up and then install it yourself, like manual. Yes. Uh, no. If if you if you install like for example, um, usually uh, Air will manage that for you with the install package, I think. But it's mm -hmm. for dependency of dependencies that will sometimes mess up stuff. Okay. But, uh, on my experience, but yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it's also very. Uh, it's also. Um, yeah, I think it's also a bit quicker. Yeah, that's what they say here. It's fast, safe, and convenient. I don't know about the rest, but uh, okay, check, it's fast. Ch ch checking the um, 
also like how to check the dependency uh, at least on on Linux, uh, mm -hmm. which you do not have binary uh, a lot all the time, mm -hmm. is helpful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good precursor to the next chapter. Um, yeah. But yeah, also this check mark, I, I believe it comes from the, the CLI package. So this package provides you like these these check marks, this this I symbol for information or like a stop sign, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, okay, so this is the last section of chapter three, and to be honest with you, I, I'm not really sure if we need to run these things because the book mentions that, um, oh, it's not the book. It mentions that you only want to do this if you want to build packages from source. And you only want to build packages from source if you want to build packages containing C or C++ code. And it, if you're using R Studio, then you don't need to think yes, about you need this. It. No, you okay. need it. Depend, depend. Uh, for, uh, if you are a Linux user, you will need it. Oh, okay. Need... If, you're, if you're a Linux user, I see. Yeah, uh, because uh, they do not provide binary for uh, all the distribution of Linux. Okay. But um, I, um, I think if you, uh, in some cases, like let's say, um, I, will, I will, I will, I will give you like a, a quick link to give an example. So it will be better yeah, if we have sure, time. Right. I don't know if we have time. But like there is a package called Prepper. Like there's plenty. There are plenty of they use it. I don't know why they use the, this name, but this is a package that is used to correct um, some geometry. So you have geometries that can be correct, that need to be corrected. And you have various methods to do that. And uh, the package is not on CRAN. It's only okay. on, on GitLab or on GitHub. And, yeah. and um, so uh, it's, and yes, and even for Windows users, you will need to add some, uh, some specific components that are not, uh, easy. and that's why sometimes you need also like to have like these tools to be installed. Like, I see. But uh, I'm not a Windows user, so I cannot say. But um, for example, in this package, I can put the link later. They ask the Windows user to to add some stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a well, maybe you don't know how. So I use Mac and I use Xcode, but I've never registered as an Apple developer. So I don't know. If I <laughs> Well, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I use, I mean, because a lot like Stan uses R, like C. So I think if you use uh, Stan, you have to use Xcode on Mac. Um, but if you in my experience on mac like if you don't have the xcode the error will tell you so it's like pretty easy or like if you don't have the r tools on windows it will mm -hmm. say so yeah i see you you will probably know when you need it so you're saying if you're using r studio then it will alert you um i've seen like in package installs like oh. it, it fails and it'll be like error. You need our tools or you need X. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's specific to our student. Um, yeah, it's good to have this discussion because I have a Mac OS user. And I don't know what's going on in these other sections. Um, and so the last section in this chapter is. Uh, yeah, verify system prep. And so I think this is verifying whether your system is ready to develop our packages. Um, so I run this on my system and uh, it just tells you the version of your R, um, the path. I believe this is the library path, if I'm not mistaken. 
slide pass. Yeah, slide pass. Anyways, uh, the Art Studio version, uh, you, the version of your dev tools and its dependencies, which are out of date. So it gives you all these packages that you need to install, or you can install them, install them with update packages, dev tools. Um, and then it gives you the dependencies of the book club art packages package that are out of date. Install that. Um, so does anybody know why book club art packages is a package? I thought it was just a GitHub repo. The only thing I could think of is that, um, like in the first or the second chapter, it mentions that package is basically just like a folder directory. So I wonder if it's just taking mm. the folder that the, the R project is seeing in and assuming that's a package or something. Yeah, I wonder if it's because you're in this book club project. And if you run mm. that outside of a project, if it would give you that. So if I run this function outside of this project? Yeah. It would yeah. give me a different so I where you see is it the package? So uh right here. Let me let me zoom in actually. Uh it says yeah. dev package and then package oh. equals book club R packages. Yeah, I'm going you... with Torin explanation. I think it's because like you are in a project and you have no ability the, the program like give you the same ID like if it's a package or if it's a project. I will try like for example of one of my other project and see later. So we can okay. test this. Um, let's see. Um, should I also test it right now? Yeah, sure. If you want to open a new session, then yeah, let me do that right now. Yeah, so, so uh, you're saying hmm. I mean yeah. I, I have tried like in my one of my projects and it said unset on the package. So maybe there is other stuff set uh, inside of this GitHub repo that uh, set it set it up. See, I have the same. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, I see unset. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. So should we add that as a question for <laughs> <laughs> I, I will do it. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so I'll move on to pack, uh, chapter four, which is the package structure and state chapter. And here we're basically learning about the very states of a package. And they also talk a little bit about the difference between a package and library, and also what this dot r build ignore file does. So package states. Um, so when you create or modify a package, you're working on the source code or the source files. And so our packages can be in five different states, source, bundled, binary, installed, and in memory. And a function call like install.packages or install underscore GitHub will move your package from these three um, states into the installed state. And then if you use the library function, then that will install, uh, bring your package into in memory state for immediate use. So a source package, a source package is just a directory of files with a package structure. And so it just contains a description file, an R directory folder containing the R files. Um, and so the book has examples of the CRAN landing page for the four cats package. So here is the CRAN landing page for four cats. Um, 
and also for cats is also on GitHub. And so you can look at that here. Um, I, I'm guessing that they're saying that like this, this is like what a source looks like for a package. And also, you also can find a package that is not developed on a public platform in this uh, read-only mirror maintained by our hub. And so here is a read-only mirror of the mass package. Uh, all right. So the next chapter uh, section is a bundle package. And a bundle package is a package that's been bundled or compressed into a single file. And usually they are compressed into tar.gz files. And tar.tar .tar stands for tape archive. And so a tape archive is something that creates one file out of many files with some compression. Um, and also gzip is something that creates the .gz extension. And so you can um, you can bundle the package that you're developing in source form using the DevTools build function. And this function calls package build build function under the hood, which calls our CMD build. And for more, more information, you can click on this link, uh, but I'm not gonna cover that here. And so basically all the cram packages are in bundled form. And when you download a package from cram, then you are downloading the bundled form of this package from this website. Um, and so if you're on a Mac or Linux, you can run this command from the terminal to decompress and unarchive the four cats bundle, uh, four cats bundle uh, file. And so tar, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what these are doing, but um, this just decompresses and un unarchives the bundle form of four cats. The tar of arguments. And this argument, it's X, V, F, that are called flags. And X is for extract, V is for variables, and F is for file name, and the file name uh, is the same at the archive. That's it. This is, no one know uh, X never, I mean, there are probably like an X, XKDC comics about like, no one remember <laughs> the flags. <laughs> okay. And everyone yeah. is Googling it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's not exactly an intuitive name. No, it's not. <laughs> but yeah, no, no worries if you don't understand it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the book also has this nice diagram here uh, that kind of shows you the difference between a source, a bundle, and a binary state. And so I'll leave the audience to go through this themselves. Um, yeah, just a, well, I guess they'll talk about it later. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Okay, fine. To learn that, uh, how it kind of works is that it saves all the functions in, in our data file once you install it. I, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's, oh, cool. yeah, yeah, in the next, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this part comes up next. Um, so the main difference between a source and an uncom uncompressed bundle is that the vignettes are built. So you have HTML files, um, and then you might contain temporary files in your source package. 
uh, bundle form does not contain this. And then any files in your .r build ignore are not included in the bundle. So we're going to talk about um, this .r build ignore um, next. <clears throat> so the book mentions that it is very important to understand the .r build ignore file. Um, so it basically controls which files from the source package make it into the downstream forms. And if you have ever seen a dot get ignore file, its concept is very similar to dot r build ignore. So apparently it's uh, each line of it is a uh, Perl compatible regex. Um, so let me let me just give you an example actually. So uh, so this is a, is a list of what you could put in your dot r build ignore file. Let me just move on. Binary packages are for people Sorry, who Howard, don't just have. Just to check. So, yeah. um, with the so the the git ignore is essentially telling GitHub of particular files not to, uh, you know, commit to your GitHub repository and to right um, thing on GitHub. But then the build ignore is a separate thing, and that's just about when you build it. It has, is not doesn't really need to be the same as the git ignore at all. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I, I should mention that. that too. Yeah. This dot r bill ignore is it also helps you um uh comply with CRAN's requirements. So if you want to submit your package to CRAN, this is an important file to have. Yeah, I just understood it as like if you want to keep things nearby that you used but they shouldn't go to CRAN. Just like in like the git ignore if you want to keep things nearby in the project, but they don't need to be version oh. controlled. So maybe you want to put things in that are built ignore that you don't want CRAN to see because it might reject your package. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I mean, the, the one that was clear enough, clearest to me was like these data processing so you might have like some scripts right, let's see. that process data, but you only need to give CRAN the output, but you want yeah. to be near your project, how you actually did it. Yeah. or in your project, I guess. Yeah. And all the um sort of use this functionality of, of dev tools automatically will add things to this, won't it? Right, correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's what the book says. Um, thanks yeah. for mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So binary packages. So you can download binary packages from the CRAN landing page. And <clears throat> so let me take you. I think yeah, this this is the binary form of WorldCats for Mac OS. This is for Windows. Um and when you download a binary file from CRAN, it's actually what you do when you run install that packages, which is what I thought was interesting. And notable differences between a binary package and a source or bundle package is, um, I think this is what you were mentioning, Tori. Um, there are no dot r files in the r directory. Instead, it has dot um, r data. Yeah. So binary versions. No longer contain .r files, but contains binary .r data files. Um, then there's a meta directory. Uh, never seen this before, but 
contains.rds files. Then let me skip all this. And I think this is what um, a binary uh, format looks like for a package. So it has the meta folder, then these R functions here. Yeah. <clears throat> but thankfully, we don't have to know what these are because we can just run install that packages. <laughs> so, um, I mean, lo long time ago, I remember how to download package by hand and try to oh, install really? them and put <laughs> them in the correct directory and failed <laughs> a lot. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Like 20 years ago? No, less. 10 no. years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll move on to. The more exciting parts, which is install package. So this is uh, um, a binary package that has been decompressed into your package library. And so in a perfect world, you would have source to bundle, bundle to binary, and binary to install. But in the real world, we have all these different functions that take you from these different formats to another format. Um, so I thought what was interesting is if you install that packages um, on a CRAN package, then you're taking it from um, the binary format, uh, binary format to to the installed format. And so you're running rcmd install, and then um, and then and then uh, moving it into the installed state. And yeah, has has anybody ever used these other functions? Did you mean like dev tools or the R command install? Uh, R command install. I've actually never seen this before. It's on the com on the shell. You use oh, it. So uh, you use it. You do not use on the on your. <clears throat> you use it like from the shell to install package um, at the shell, at the command line operating system level. OK. Uh, you have like, maybe you have used the other one, like air command scripts that's used to run a script uh, from it. I think it's a shortcut of R. I mean, you're basically like, I can send you a link. But yeah, I have used air command install. <laughs> For example, when you work a remote computers and you do not have a, and you want to install stuff without going into R. But mm. it's not common for me. Uh, maybe it's common for other people. So you use this to install packages um, using the terminal instead of R? Yeah, I think like. Uh, uh, functions that you can uh, from the terminal, because you can pull air from the terminal, like write a script and right. call these scripts uh, like a Python package and stuff like that, the same way uh, with R. And this is what you use. And you have plenty of them, like you have air command, air script. So that's basically like uh, a pre R command write to simplify your life uh, uh, in the command line when you, um, let's say, Let's say, like for example, uh, you want to install a bunch of machines, mm. uh, computers, and you do not want to spend time every time to load R and manually uh, do it. So you can add this line inside of a shell script that will install everything. So you do not need oh. like to reproduce. I mean, to simplify uh, the task of uh, system administrators or, or like if you are running a virtual machine and stuff like that. This is my understanding. Could be wrong, but I can find your link on it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the DevTools 
package also has these families of install underscore um, functions for other needs. So if you want to install a package from GitHub, then you would use install underscore GitHub. Um, but I think our studio is trying to promote this pack um, package and trying to steer away people from DevTools installed GitHub. Anyways. Yeah, so this is just showing you what are all the available install functions. So you can install from Bitbucket, um, from GitHub, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I believe that the, um, the authors of the R Packages book want to edit this section after, um, uh, after pack, uh, I mean, edit, edit this section to reflect the pack, our package. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And then, so lastly, in memory package is what you get when you run library use this. And then, so once you do library use this, uh, you are basically loading your, loading use this package into the memory. And then you're attaching it to the search path. And um, the book also mentions or cautions the reader not to use library something something when you are developing packages. Um, they they recommend that you use the here. So library is not a great way to tweak and test drive a package. Um, uh, this is something about using this format to use functions inside a package. I'm not sure where that was exactly. But anyways, let's move on. Yep, so the last section is about package libraries and talks about the difference between a library and a package. And so library is a directory containing installed packages and packages are functional instructions to process information. And so we, uh, technically we use the library function to load a package. And the book mentions that these two terms are frequently misused. I'm sure I've, I've uh, definitely misused these terms. So. And also one other thing is this dot live lib tasks function. So when I run that on my Mac, I get this one path, which is the path to my library. It contains all the package that I installed. And so if you are on a Windows, you would see two, two paths in your output, uh, a user library path and a system level library path. But since I'm on a Mac, I only see the system level library path here. But the book also mentions that it's useful if you're on a Mac to, um, to create a user level library. When you reinstall R or upgrade R next time. Um, so basically, sorry. yeah, this is where I was having a question because actually okay, my environment, so when I did my like um, uh, function that we did before, like, is it ready? I don't know what it's called, situation ready or something. Um, it was said my R version needs to be updated. So I was like, okay, I'll update and then I'll follow these instructions. Well, my R libs user is not the default that they say. <laughs> so I don't know if there's been a change since the two chips. Oh. Chips, because mine actually has like a little bit extra, 
I can paste it. Are you also on an M1 chip? No, I'm on the, um, the other one. M2? No, I'm not. I'm on the regular, like the Intel. Oh, the Intel, OK. Uh, so yeah, my R libs user from the system environment is has like an extra thing in the path. I mean, I guess I can just set it, but it has this x86 underscore 64. I don't know if that has to do with the chip. I think this is it. This is like the type of um, of uh, <clears throat> architecture you are using. Yeah, so it doesn't quite match, I guess, the default that they say it is. Um, there's like an extra thing there. So yeah, what is yours? Howard? I can pass mine. If you run this, you can see it. Oh yeah, you have x86. Oh yes, yeah, so yours has the chip. But arm oh, six. Yeah. Is that the chip? Yes, yeah. I think. But this is the architecture of yeah. the. Um, I don't know if oh. it's the chip or if it's the whole uh, uh, architecture. We can Google it. I will. I will do that. Architecture. So I don't know if that. Yeah. Yeah. Does it yeah. matter though? What what this is. Um, no, I mean, I guess my point was just like, they say in the book, it's a structured default, and it's not what they say it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's some little PR. <laughs> yeah. So they say like, it defaults to library R, the R version slash lower library. But now we are seeing right there is a, one level more level to that. But I guess I don't know if it matters, like if you overwrite it to use the default that they suggest. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you create the directory, it won't, def you also have to override the rlibs user if it doesn't match the default. So when you um when you run this function, then you are overriding your R no, user. Not. You're not. You're not. So you have to do two. You, if you don't create the directory in the structure of the default, and you do a different one, then you have to overwrite in the environment. So you I just saw, do that. Yeah, you just saw your oh, default had the arm thing, right? So instead of running what they say i would run it how it how your computer yeah that this arm thing yeah mm, so yeah. i also don't think it actually updates the lib path it just adds another path first so i think you'd actually have like heaps of them and you just like if you specify them all in your environment you could have like you know lines and lines of different paths and it would just choose the first one We'll, yeah. we'll default we'll to the first one anyway. And then, um, so you don't want to lose the default. It's just going to be your second option on the path, I think. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure. This is yeah, I, I got a little lost. <laughs> I I think that, like, if you have multiple paths in your dot .lib path, and you're, like, loading a library, um, R just, like, looks for the first path, and then if, the, if your package is not in the first pass, then it looks in the second pass, and et cetera, et cetera. This is how it works on on uh, on Linux, at least. Like, it's it going to go for the first pass. So that's how I'll link it. And then if you found nothing, go to the other one. That, that's why, like, when I, I'm, I'm, I'm printing all the environmental paths that I have, I have like uh, a bunch of them. <laughs> uh -huh. 
but uh, yeah. yes, I do not know if it's the same for R. So probably, if you set a user level path when you install a package, does it install it only in one path or? I mean, it installs it just at the user level. Like when you see like uh, this this little tilde means that you are at the home directory of the user. Uh -huh. Like if you check on your chat, uh, no, on the, um, on the book, uh -huh. like, uh, yeah, you have my full pass. So uh -huh. I start at home, oh. then, uh, it's my home. Then the finest uh -huh. is me, the user, and then the library pass. And if you check, like, for example, on the book, she used the um, tilde, like the small tilde. That yeah. means that you are on the home directory of the user. This is yeah. the same, like, uh, how can I type that? This. Yeah, and this. then, well, I guess my question is, what would this change to your work? Because it mentions, like, if you have a user level pass path, it can protect you in your other projects, you know, when you have this system level path so how does yeah so work well the, how does i know that, that with me like <laughs> yeah so like i know that when i'm running stuff on the hbc i have to at the start of every script i need to specify which where the light where my packages are um because by default the packages are stored on some like you know university-wide um right. folder which i don't have access to so every single time i run something in r on the hbc i have to specify r, you know dot r lib paths and specify the path that's in my local directory um and so if you had multiple different um like R libraries folders on your computer and they're all for different projects, you can just at the start of the project or even when you're in, inside your project, you specify this is the path I'm using. And then when you open it up, it'll only search for it will search for that first path. Um that's my understanding of it. Also in a teaching settings, like let's say like you have a <clears throat> students uh connect themselves through uh uh, some notification, then they get their home and they will get their own package that they have installed. That could be not on the same version that the one you have built, for example. And you have plenty of, of stuff like that. So the, the environment could be different and you will be, it, will be, it, it, it can lead to difficulties. Um, so, <clears throat> for example, um, like I have done to it recently. Uh, some package need to be installed at the super user level. Uh, they need more administrative rights. So you, if I am started with my username, they will not, they will not work. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, okay. This is the case from shiny servers and stuff like that. Uh, they need to get access to uh, to some uh, of your system control. Okay. But. So uh, so yeah, for, for teaching, it was like, I remember it could have been like a lot of pain because like uh, it could be like the same stuff, but not exactly the same. So you have to check. That's why the session info is usually asked when you want to debug stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because okay. this is a quick quick check that maybe this is not the same package. Um, and like, I, I, I like, uh, and yeah, you have to, <clears throat> to be careful of that. I think this is a good, uh, it was a good part of the book. Yeah. <laughs> Probably to explain a lot of things clearly. Yeah, cool. Well, maybe I will set a user path just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at worst, you just delete everything and reinstall. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just computer, no? Just <laughs> it won't go on fire. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess like one last point I want to mention is libraries should never be used inside a package. We'll discuss this more in chapter 13. Yeah, some exciting stuff is going to come. <laughs> sure. Well, thanks. Yeah, so I think. Thank you. Is Ryan on chapter Good, thank five, you. right? Yeah. Cool. I'm down for a chapter five. That's the next week, right? Yeah. We oh, had cool. um, an opening, just the last, I guess I do have one more announcement. Ber Virgilio, I can't say it. Virgilio had to cancel his 
um, November 9th volunteering. So we have a spot open in, I guess that's how long, two or three weeks. We have a bit of time. Uh, should we add more question to the stuff? Or should we yeah, run away with what I, we I have? might try to think of like a, a question that for this path. This I mean, question. yeah, the, this question of managing paths is a good one, but I don't yeah. know if you can I, phrase it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can put a placeholder in there. Pack okay. library path management. So sure. And when should you use them? I think like for you, it's important. And when I was teaching, I remember it was a yeah. lot of headache uh, <laughs> to, to be sure like, uh, also because like, you know, you were on one computer. So let's say, I don't know what kind of Mac you have. And right. then when you go like to your teaching place, students can have other computers or the computer like room you are using can have another setup. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it can quickly uh, escalate it, I would say. Yeah, interesting. Okay. It's Do you good. guys know if there's like an equivalent to like the um, in Python Anaconda environments where you sort of open a new environment and then you install all your pip installs in there, do all your coding, and it's completely contained? Is that essentially what that RNEV you were just looking at? Yeah, that's what does? I was thinking. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, no, <laughs> sadly no. not. No, Conda is a manage, it's managed uh, at everything at a higher level. Like, let's say Conda manage um installation like at the c level and stuff like that then r where the equivalence of um air arm will be virtual arm in python so it just managed the package not the dependency of the package mm. i don't know if it's my <laughs> like this is a mess but like um let's say like for the example i give you have dependency of like this uh mat uh mat uh package on c uh, I don't remember the name, MP, MPFR, something like that. And with Kondal, let's say, uh, no, an example that I know more like GDAL, GUDAL. This is a huge C library that imports a bunch of stuff. It's very used and a pain to install. Like you can install it with Conda. And then when you use R, it will use the Conda environment uh, specified. But if you just use R, on, it will still go to pick your GDAL of your system, your GUDAL of your system. Well, in Conda, it will use the Goodall of the um, Conda. And um, so it's, it have a particular name, I don't remember, but like Conda is more like, uh, it's go a bit lower, deeper than um, the virtual environment, if I remember correctly. Yeah, definitely. If you use R of, you're still calling back the dependency of your system, which is Conda, you will call, you will install them specifically for the Conda. Or mini conda or whatever else the name is big conda anak <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely something i haven't gotten into but but it, it it improved like uh yeah. air, uh the air of stuff what it's about still better than just uh, not managing it you know it's like docker what is i know that has something to do with this like <laughs> you can add that question for Jenny Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with making sure I, 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 I'm not, uh, I'm information not... is transferable across, you know, to other people. Yeah. Like, but yeah, usually what our people are doing is like they do not use too much conda. They use Docker, which is like a lot of time like using a bazooka like to kill a fly. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. In my humble opinion, but uh All right. Well, That's great, it. great for, thanks for your insights. But uh, no, it's great, it's, uh, Docker is great, but a lot of time you don't need it. Cool, all right. Okay, well, bye everyone. Yeah, good session guys, see you later. Yeah. See you later.